well, I'm a teacher. Like, what? Th this isn't on accident that I ended up here. This is. Yeah. This is who I am. Welcome to Inspiring Teachers, a show bringing you classroom tips, motivation, and stories from successful educators. Join Tavis Beam and Danny Hogger as they explore the why of teaching. Welcome to Inspiring Teachers. Danny Hogger here recording another amazing edition. I have John Spencer from Oregon, and he is such a creator and drives a lot of really interesting content. Love your profile on Twitter at Spencer Ideas talking about sometimes I make things, sometimes I make a difference. On a good day, I get to do both. I feel that is so strong with what I do, whether I'm recording a song uh, for Danny Hogger Music or recording a podcast or writing a blog or doing a history podcast with my students. That's really how I feel good at the end of the day. And so, John, thank you for joining us. I know you're a former middle school and professor and appreciate you uh, taking time for inspiring teachers today. Yeah, glad to be here. Thank you. Yeah, so I've been following you uh, for a little while and reading a lot of your great content on SpencerVideos.com, watching your, uh, your drawings and your sketching uh, videos, really great stuff. But I don't know a lot about like who you are and how you got to education. So what was your journey in and the why of why you started in education? So I actually started um, when I was in college. I didn't think I was going to become a teacher. Um, I worked for a, an inner city nonprofit, and I, I um, helped run the tutoring and mentoring program. And, um, you know, I really thought I would be in the nonprofit world, um, honestly. And and then I realized um, that if, if you really want to make a difference and you really want to be present and you really want to, to serve that community – um, teaching is one of the best options, right? So it was like I could work for a nonprofit and do a lot of things like fundraising and meeting with volunteers and all of that was okay. But what I loved um, to do was to actually, you know, be in the community, work in the community, work with students. Um, you know, my favorite times in that nonprofit were when I actually got to do the tutoring or the mentoring or teach something. And so I was like, I, I um, hit this moment where... I was student teaching. It was my, my first week of student teaching. And I realized, and so, you know, I, I kind of came into it through that, through that route. That's pretty cool. I, I love when I don't know it and we make connections like this because I worked two years. I was in broadcasting for 10 years and thought, well, what can I do that's also like a little more meaningful where I'm talking and communicating? I'm like, well, that, that's teaching. But I ended up doing two years with the Salvation Army in Orange County, working for the Adult Rehabilitation Center for people who are addicted to drugs and alcohol. Oh, wow. and, and the same thing, I went out and made speeches, and then I started speaking at schools and Red Ribbon Weeks and thing like, things like that. I'm like, oh, this would be cool to do. I realized like you could keep students from a path of, of, of losing their potential or going down a road that they're not aware of, right? Mm -hmm. So I kind of came to it in a similar way where I'm like, yeah, I want to help people. I'm like, oh, teaching is helping, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah like, you're yeah. instilling with them a greater mentality. And I did a four years in middle school. You were a former middle school teacher and you're a professor now. What are some of the lessons in middle school that you learned or that uh, changed your experiences as an educator? Uh, the fascinating thing is um, I, in terms of my major, I chose education and, uh, and history. Um, and my goal there was, you know, I fell in love with history in middle school mm. because of this really cool epic project that I got to do. Um, and so, you know, the, the whole reason I fell in love with the, the subject of middle school is because of getting to do a true project. Uh, I got to own the whole process. I got to do research. I got to do content creation. I got to be creative. I got to be a maker. Um, and this was old school. This was back when the way you had to edit audio was with like magnetic, big magnetic tape sure. that you like cut yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And like um, we went to a radio studio to record the script because you couldn't get a decent audio quality on right. a, a computer. It just didn't <laughs> exist back then. Yeah. Um, but, you know, the transferable thing. So all the technology has changed, but the transferable piece that that was the passion for history, the passion for making that creative spark from middle school. It was Mrs. Smoot. Um, and I still remember there was a moment where, um, you know, it was the first time I ever owned my learning at all. It was the first time I did research. Um, and although it was exciting and fun, it was also terrifying. I would uh, call these former baseball players and I'd be so nervous. 
um, half the time I would whisper and I would sound like a, like a cre- <laughs> creepy whisper voice on the phone. You know, like I'm sure the person on the other end is like, I'm going to die or something. But, um, <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So, no, but the, yeah. But, but I mean, just... this whole project was like terrifying, but it was also life changing and transformational for me. And so, you know, I don't think I knew it when I was in the eighth grade. I think as an eighth grade student, I thought I'm going to be a maker. I'm going to do projects. I'm going to be a historian. I thought like I might even go into journalism. Um, I didn't know that really what I would eventually become as a middle school teacher because of this amazing middle school teacher that I had. It's pretty neat, the influence that people can have or that you are having without even thinking about it down the road that might make a difference for someone. So I did five years with the uh, Los Angeles Angels baseball team for their radio station. So I appreciated oh, wow. you know, when I had Albert Pujols in the studio or something, and they would tell me, okay, make sure you get good uh, good cuts on the you know, welcome back to AM830 and you're listening to Angels baseball. He would do one, I was be like, He'd ask, like, is that good? I'm like, yeah, it's fine. I'm not going to have him do it again. Like, dude, he's making like $25 million this year. You know, I'm like, I'm not going to tell him, actually, yeah, could you do this, uh, pronounce this a little bit stronger, right? Like, I, no, I'm out of here. I have to go hit home runs. Um, but it's, for, it's for fun. You, like, like, so you worked in the nonprofit world. You worked in broadcasting. Yeah. For you, yeah. What are, what are those pieces from that, those two worlds that have shaped how you now teach? Okay. Well, interesting is that uh, I find myself presenting, you know, almost performing material. So I'm teaching U.S. history, econ and gov. And definitely, like, if I throw a joke out and nobody laughs, well, then I'm going to keep taking that joke on me. I'm saying, all right, no one thought that was funny. Great. Cool. So I'm just an awkward guy up here making jokes and nobody's laughing. This is just like radio. I can't hear my audience. You know, I have these little running dialogues (laughs) with myself while I'm teaching the material. So it doesn't get everyone in the room. But I know a lot of the students who weren't history fans are at least entertained. And if they're entertained, they're listening. And then if I make eye contact, I know they're learning. You know, so there's that bit that I think really ties in. And I'm always wanting to not be the boring teacher. And I didn't have a great history teacher that I could point to in middle school. So I find myself learning along with them a lot of the times or ahead of them. So I'm trying to convey it in a way that I think captivates. And it doesn't always work, right? But it, a lot of times I think it does. And so being dynamic comes from those experiences. And that I think makes me have fun. I know if I'm having fun, if they're having fun, they're going to be engaged in learning as well. And then trying to get more interactive stuff like the project you mentioned, I think also gets them thinking more than just sitting. Yeah, and it's interesting you mentioned fun. Like one of the things I was thinking about, like, it, you know, I'm uh, really passionate about creativity and having students you know making um and like you mentioned podcasts for me it was documentaries and podcasts and things like that um before it was ever the stem type stuff the stem stuff kind of came later um but one of one of the things i found fascinating is that students are more productive and more creative when they're having fun when there's laughter when it's relaxed and i always felt like i was kind of getting away with something for the first few <laughs> years where it was like, is it okay that the, the class is fun? You know, but then I realized like the times when there were discipline issues or there are times where the, the culture didn't go right or there are times where I got upset, right? Those mm-hmm. moments never happened when we were laughing, right? Those oh, never I agree. Happened. I agree. <laughs> never happened when things are fun, you know? Yeah, no, I do exactly know what you mean. This is my first year teaching high school. I've got juniors and seniors coming from middle school and I'm like, well, that's a big age jump. How? Will I keep discipline issues from arising? How will I keep them from rising up against me or challenging me? Especially since, you know, we're, we look on the younger side. They sometimes don't see the line of crossing. I went through the semester zero issues because I always think if you are being sincere, nice, genuine, I put myself out there all the time. I'm pretty honest with stuff. It's pretty hard to be a jerk to somebody <laughs> who's really showing you. Uh, and being vulnerable with you. You know, if, it's like, if I can make the jokes on me, you don't need to, right? We're going to yeah. respect each other. Like, there is a boundary, but we're going to have a good time. And I really try hard to have a good time each class, not just every day, but like, you know, give them something to enjoy. Because if, if not, what else are we doing with our lives if we're not enjoying these kinds of interactions, right? Um, you know, I kind of feel like being first year teaching through the material, I'm getting better. You know, I, I'm sure I'll be a smarter, wiser history teacher 10 years from now. So I'm making up for it in other ways. You know, I'm trying to find the most creative ways to teach that I can. But in the meantime, I better use the energy that I have or the vibrance that I can bring, you know, and make that my thing, make that mm-hmm. how I'm different. 
So tell me more about, I was intrigued by the documentary style of um, getting them involved in activities. What is that? How do you, how do you define that? What is the, how does that look like? Well, so, I mean, that was when I taught middle school, you know, I started out as a, a history teacher and we would do, you know, each class period was responsible for one documentary, although I learned the hard lesson that it works best to do that with one documentary and stagger it. Like each, each class has like a different uh, quarter when they're doing a documentary project. Okay, so okay. so I, I, that was one of the, the huge lessons for me was we could generally do a documentary project um, and accomplish it in about three to four weeks, usually about three. And so if, if I did two documentaries with students each quarter, then, you know, by the end of the year, each class period had gotten to do a, 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 a fuller documentary. And so, you know, it, it started there in, uh, like I said, middle school history and uh, eighth grade history, actually. And so we would just find topics that were relevant to what we were learning about. And so, um, you know, we were learning about immigration. They, they did an, uh, uh, Voices of the Immigrant um, uh, documentary. Uh, we were learning about globalization. They did a globalization documentary. And, uh, and it was in particular about the forces of globalization on your own neighborhood. So globalization sounds big, but it's actually this force that shapes your everyday life. Mm. Um, so they would interview people. Each group was responsible for an interview. Um, each group was responsible for a series of like pictures and audio to go with it. Um, and it was just basically, I mean, it was, it was a documentary, um, nothing super fancy, but it was, they were really fun projects. Um, and so really for me, it started out with documentaries and then the, um, podcasts and blogging were more like year long things that they did. Cool. Um, so yeah. And would they do most of the filming then they'd go out and interview someone and, and record outside the classroom for the most part? Yeah, you know, because we have limited time, limited schedule. Uh, and so the interviews were purely optional because we didn't we actually didn't assign homework in my class. And so what I would say is um, if you want to interview people, we can bring them into school. But that could be a challenge, right? Because the school was actually pretty uptight about guests and guest speakers. Oh, and so right. that was a challenge. But... In general, we would go through the paperwork and we would do that. And, um, you know, I, I've seen really cool examples of like, a, I don't know if you if you know Trevor Muir, but he did a really cool uh, World War II documentary where they, at, you know, he taught high school and they actually went to a veterans um, services place and a, a VA hospital and a um, nursing home. And they interviewed these World War II veterans yeah, and they, they did awesome. their documentary that way, which I thought was was really cool. Yeah. Um, you know, and I think I think there were things I didn't know um, back then about you know, storytelling and, and some of the aspects of that. Um, I think I was so focused on the documentary as the method for learning. And, and then I think when I eventually taught um, photojournalism later in, in my middle school time, I realized that the learning would come it, like if if they focused on the craft and actually crafted a really, really good story it wouldn't detract at all from, um, from, from hitting the standards. If that, if that makes sense. It does. It does. It's like, um, you sometimes want to tell them where the learning is, but sometimes they can find it, right? They can. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's yeah. That's interesting too. I, I think about that a lot. Um, so what is something that as your students leave your room at the end of a semester or a term that you would want have, uh, to have imparted to them besides curriculum? Like what would you want them to have learned from you? So, you know, it's interesting now. I mean, if you're talking about students at this point, you know, I'm, I'm now at the university. I've been there for three years. And so now it, the, the, the real goal is, you know, uh, I'm working with new teachers. And so I want to see new teachers de define themselves as risk takers and innovators. Yeah, you know, I want to see them to be open to design thinking and project based learning. I want to see them be open to infusing creativity into their lessons not just teaching a boxed boxed curriculum um yeah, that's my kind of my hope for them um and then obviously on, on an individual basis you have these like hopes for each one like I, I hope you really learn how to master classroom management or i hope you really figure this piece out or i hope you 
um, can have this paradigm shift and, and start valuing diversity a little bit better. Or, you know, you have those individual pieces, but I would say in general, I think I, I really want to see my new new teachers come away saying like, I can, I can take creative risks. I can innovate in my practice. Um, That's great. Yeah. yeah. I like it. that message uh, and those messages come through a lot in the videos that you make. Can you tell people where they can find your content and how oh, they yeah. can uh, follow you? Yeah, so you can um, you can find my blog. It is uh, spencerauthor.com. Uh, you can contact me. It's john at spencerauthor.com. Uh, then my videos are at spencervideos.com. Uh, and then I do ones that are specifically writing prompts. And those are out, um, all the videos are on a website and um, videowritingprompts.com, actually. All right. Well, yeah, cool. videowritingprompts.com. Sorry about that. <laughs> yeah, all so. good, man. Good to double check. Well, we would love to talk to you again sometime down the road if you have anything that you'd uh, want to talk about or discuss as specific. But we thanks for everything that you're doing. You're doing great work up there. You're inspiring a lot of us. Just your stuff that you do on Twitter, I see engages with a lot of people. And I know it was very motivational. So thanks for being a guest with us today. We super appreciate yeah. it. All right. Thank you so much. All right. For everyone else, Danny Hogger here for Inspiring Teachers. We'll see you next week for another edition. For now, class dismissed. Thanks for watching.